All right, guys. So I had a comment from Nigel uh, on another one of my videos, which is where I gave you a kind of a, a flavour of the London system by showing five uh, or seven quick games and showed you kind of how the London system could go. And Nigel saying, hey, could you maybe do one uh, on the Scandinavian as black? So I'm happy to do that. And here we go. So the Scandinavian defence. It starts with e4, and then you, with the black pieces, reply with d5. So you're immediately contesting the centre. Now, obviously, this can go lots of different ways, and I'm going to show you half a dozen different games, um, all of which have ended in within 20 moves. Um, but it doesn't tend to lead to very quick games. But what you tend to find, I think, with the Scandinavian is quite an open board. Um, having said that, I play a particular line that not everybody plays. So the, the best move here by far, so I mean, I'm looking at my games here on the chess.com explorer and rapid only, okay? So in actual fact, if you go back one move, you can see this is what I've played in rapid over the years. E6, since I started playing more rapid, I was playing French defense a lot and got a 54% win rate with that, so that's very good. Uh, D5, however, I've, I've had a 58% win rate in rapid. If I go to all games, then actually I used to play a, a lot more Scandinavian with one D5 uh, with 52% win rate. And then E6, um, so this is rapid and blitz basically. E6, I've played somewhat less uh, with a 53% win rate, but in rapid, it's gone pretty well. Okay, So you can test immediately white's king's pawn. And the most common move that you'll get by far is e takes d5. Now we will see what happens otherwise. Um, if you get, for example, e5, which is actually the second most popular move, everything else is kind of trivial, right? Uh, but you, you will get slight alternatives, as we'll, we'll see a couple actually in the games. e5 I tend to like, and as you can see on here, I've got a 56% win rate against that. And generally what I'll do is I'll just push c5 straight away. So what you're getting here, it's a bit like a French, but you haven't pushed e6. And what that means is that you can actually get your light square bishop out before you play e6, as you would do with the French defense. The French defense, you'd meet e4 with e6 immediately, and that creates what's known as the French bishop, and it's not very good. Um, but with the Scandi, if they push, you can you can develop your bishop straight away if you want, but I just tend to push c5 and take good control over the center squares here. And we'll see one or two of those games. But the most common response, and the best response by white, is to capture the pawn on d5. And then the, uh, the classical response here by black is to capture with the queen. Now that begs for knight c3 kicking the queen. Knight f3 is also played as well. But you see, I've seen knight c3 a lot. I've not played this. I've only had 18 games from this position. And then oh, I've always played queen a5. But there are, there are alternatives. Queen can go back to here or to here. Some people even, I think, play queen e6. But um, that's the kind of more classical Scandinavian. I don't play that one. I haven't, like I say, only 18 games I've done that. My most common one by far, as you can see here, is knight to f6, 331 games, I've won 55%. This is called the modern variation. So you're not immediately recapturing the pawn. So it's a bit like a gambit. However, you you are going to get this pawn at some point in time because it's it's very difficult to for, for white to hang on to. The most common move that we find here in, in my games is knight c3 trying to protect the pawn and then you simply take the pawn white normally recaptures and then you get your queen out but here's the difference your queen's here there's no knight now on, on b1 that can jump out and, and kick your queen so you are actually ahead slightly in development yeah it's a queen it's a queen you've got your queen out on the board and you have to be comfortable with that if you're not comfortable with that don't don't play this this approach uh, I mean, and it is unprincipled to throw your queen out into the board so early, but white's got no development. Everything's still in the box. 
So you can steal a march on your opponent that way. And I've won 63% of games from this position in Rapid. So there, there's a few other things that you might see. At the lower levels, another response that you'll see quite often, and this is the second most common uh, move that I've seen from white, is C4. Now this is inaccurate. So you, can, you know what white's trying to do. He's trying to look after the pawn, but then you walk into what is called the Icelandic Gambit or the Palm Gambit. And you can then, as black, play E6. And you're, you're basically threatening to take, take, and then you can take with the queen or the knight, right? And most common, white will take. And then you recapture with your bishop. Now, look, white's got two pieces developed. Yes, he's given up the e-pawn. White has no e-pawn. But, sorry, black, black has no e-pawn. White has no e-pawn either. And white has arguably a, a slightly awkward bishop uh, pawn out there on c4. And the a common trick here is for, let's say, opponent develops a knight, it's the most common. And then look, queen e7. Okay. Now, in rapid, I've only won 17% of these games. But the, the idea here is that you, you put your queen behind there. And then you are able, you can actually just grab that pawn because it comes with a discovered check. Right, but I haven't had the best results with the Icelandic Gambit in um, in Rapid. Let's have a look at Blitz. I suspect it does a bit better. Yeah, 54% win rate in Blitz. Okay, but it's not it's not a bad opening. I just haven't maybe I just haven't played it that much in Rapid, but we'll see. So. Um, if you go to, let's, so this is something that I like to do these days as well, is go to the Lee Chess analysis board, because Lee Chess gives you uh, access to the whole player's database, all the games that have been played. And here I've got it set to 1600, 1800, 2000, right? Which is similar to maybe 1200 to 1600 in chess.com uh, money. So we'll agree that. And if you look at 1e4 from white, then e5 is okay, um, wins 45% for black, c5, the Sicilian, wins 48% from black, e6 is the French, 47%, and d5 wins 47%, okay? Now, but within that, let's drill a bit deeper. The most common move with almost 8 million uh, votes is to capture. And this is where it gets interesting because Queen takes d5 wins 45% of the time for black. However, if you look at the second most popular response, which is the modern, which is what I'm suggesting, knight to f6, that actually wins 49% for black compared to 46% for white. So the modern defense to the Scandinavian is best by test. Okay, well, let's, that's enough of that. You want to see some actual games. Let's dive in. So I've got a mix of Blitz and Rapid here, and they all finish within 20 moves. So just to give you a bit of a flav, uh, e4, d5, the Scandinavian, takes, most common, knight f6, the modern. Right? Knight comes out, you grab the pawn, here he grabs, and I grab back with a queen. But this queen is not under any stress right now whatsoever, and she can just drop back to d8 anytime she likes. Uh, we have d4 from white. And now I develop my knight to c6, okay? I've got a development lead. I've also got two attackers on this pawn. It's defended only once, so what's he going to do? Knight to f3, develop the bishop. Now, point to remember, very often in the Scandinavian, and you'll be familiar with this if you play the Vienna as white, um, is this idea of, of having an open file. And so in the Vienna, very, if you play the Vienna Gambit, you very often have no f-pawn. Right, so you want to castle short and get your rook straight onto that file. In the Scandi, if you have no deep pawn, because deep pawn gone, Dave gone, Dave not here, right? You can castle long and get your rook straight onto the D file. So you've centralized your rook and put it on the semi-open file. So I very often do that. And here we have bishop b3. Because obviously with, with this move, I basically pinned this knight. So I'm now threatening to take this. Knight can't take back because the queen falls, right? Um, I guess queen could take, yeah, queen could take back there. But black plays the bishop out as a third defender, and now I castle long, okay? So now I've got my queen 
and my rook on the same file. Not a bad thing. White flinches at this point, I think, and pushes c4. I slide across to a5. It's a very typical Scandinavian square for the queen, with check. Bishop has to retreat. And now what do I do? Do I retreat the queen? Yep, just retreat here. Again, redressing my attentions to d4 square, but also now looking at b2, which is undefended, because the bishops come flying out. He pushes a pawn. I can fly in to the center. Knights in the center are better. Doesn't rhyme. Okay. But again, this knight can't take because it's pinned, because he'll lose his queen. So he moves his bishop another time. That is what move number three for the same bishop on move 11. And now I simply grab the knight and I grab it with check. So although there's a discovered attack against my queen, don't matter because this comes with checkity check check. And look, the queen can't capture. Now this isn't the best move in the world because after pawn captures, oh, now I've got a queen under attack and a bishop under attack. However, my opponent is stuck in the middle of the board. His pawns are in complete disarray. I'm going to save my queen, probably capture that, take that pawn, I'm not sure. Um, and my king is castled and I've got a centralized rook, so I'm feeling all right. So, but here I grab the pawn. This is a desperado move, right? So I'm saying, I'm going to grab a pawn. I'm going to threaten your queen and your rook. So now if you take my queen, I'm going to take your queen. And you're going to have to re recapture and lose casting rights, okay? So here, queen takes bishop. And now I can get away. So we're going to keep the queens on the board. Queen's also looking at this undefended pawn, it must be said. So I grab this, but the queen can't capture the pawn right now because... I'm now looking at the knight. So you can get a feel for this kind of very open, speedy, aggressive, tactical kind of game. Queen here comes back. I come here with check. Bishop blocks. Check again. Queen blocks. Loses his rook and resigns. Okay, so that's that game. But so what was that? That was 1200 rated opponent in uh, maybe five minute blitz. Right, here's a 10 minute rapid and we're both in the 1500s, both mid 1500s. So e4, d5, Scandinavian takes, Scandinavian modern, knight comes out, we trade knights, blah, 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 and d4. We saw this, I think, in the last game. Come out with a knight, again, second attacker. Ooh, an early c4, that's aggressive. So here, I just grab the pawn. It's like free stuff. Queen takes, knight takes. Now, this is a very nice knight. My opponent's got development of nothing at all. I am actually only one, two moves away from castling. Technically, he is as well. He could do the same thing. But also, my knight is looking at c2, which is not very nice. So he has to defend the c2 square. Brings out his bishop. Reasonable move. I bring out my bishop. Now, kind of looking at his pawn, but just getting the bishop out out on the board, getting ready to castle. He pushes b3, and I castle. He retreats his bishop. Oh dear. That was just silly. And So he went from 9 minutes 32 to 9.03 on the clock, and then fell for a, a king rook fork, and resigned. So there you go. That's what happens. Game number 3. Um, I'm 1594, my opponent the Danangang is 1542. And we have the Scandinavian. No surprises. And takes and knight f6, the modern knight. Takes, takes, queen takes. Right? You, you see this a lot. And it already feels like black is just slightly ahead. You know? Anyway, so again, d4. Knight c6, second attack on the pawn. We've been here before. Pin the knight. So the knight now comes out to f3 to be a second defender. Pin the knight, again c4. And here I, I just push my queen to e4 with check. Bishop takes, and now, what would you play? Again, bishop takes f3. This bishop's pinned, this bishop can't recapture. The only way to recapture is with a pawn, and it's good by pawn structure. So again, where's this king gonna go? 
White's already thrown the sea pawn up the board, right? He's got doubled and isolated pawns here. A light isolated h pawn, not good at all. All right, so now I slide across, grab the other pawn. Queen comes across here, and I simply castle. My knight's defending the a a7 pawn. And now I've got queen and rook again on an open file. So if you are an, uh, an attacking and aggressive player, if you like the Vienna Gambit kind of approach, this might suit you. You never know. Okay, bishop comes out actually undefending a pawn here on b2. Do we spot that? We do indeed. Queen takes b2. Now threatening rook. Something must be done. Rook comes across here. We trade off rooks because I'm... I mean, look at this board now. Look at White's pawn structure. It's all over the place. Look at look at mine. Three, four, all in the starting box. Yeah, my opponent's got the bishop pair, but that's small compensation for this uh, huge lack of development. It has to be said that he's he's got two attackers now looking at a7. So I come here with check. Bishop blocks. Come here again with check. This is very, if you like using your queen, um, this might be good for you. Ideas here maybe of knight in hitting the bishop, also maybe hitting that because the bishop can't recapture. Of course I play that, good. And now he blocks. Now, what would you play here? What did I play here? We'll find out. Simply e6, getting ready to bring out my last minor piece. Queen comes and grabs the spare pawn. Knight retreats, hitting the queen. Queen comes there, knight blocks. Bishop comes in. Now, this might look a bit scary and hairy. Um, but there's a simple c6 move. Adds a second defender. The, the king, if, if a piece is attacked twice, the king is not a defender. Right? Because, um, well, it depends. Oh, no. No, the king can't recapture if, uh, if a piece is attacked twice. Because it would have to move into check. So we need a second defender. And uh, c6... It's a discovered defense by the queen on the knight. Castles. I bring out my bishop now as the third defender on the knight. So now my king can actually move. He plays rook to b1 and falls for mate in two. There you go. Nice and dynamic. Seat of your pants stuff. So you, if you're getting a feel for this, you're either going to be going, I like the look of these games, or I don't like the look of these games. Anyway, ready for another one. This is a 15 minute rapid. My opponent's rated 1382, I'm 1571. Scandinavian. Who'd have thunk it? And it's the modern, so we have the exchange. And this is an important one. This is one that you that you need to know because we've already mentioned it, the Icelandic Palm Gambit. What's the move is E6. White's thinking, I've already moved this pawn here grabbed a pawn. It's now doubled. It's out in space. I may as well just trade the bugger off. So he trades it off, but you get to recapture with the bishop, right? So now you're only three moves away from castling long if you want to go long. You're only two moves from castling short if you want to go short. You've got two pieces out on the board, and if you are, um, if you like front foot and attacking games, if you don't have much of a reverse gear in your chess game, this is a situation you might like. B3, very conservative and quiet here, right? But in actual fact, um, it doesn't do that much. It, yeah, it kind of does. It kind of does. Because say you, you put like queen here, for example, puts bishop there. I have had times when I've captured here and regretted it. Because um, actually there, just the pawn can recapture. Yeah. Normally, if the pawn isn't there and the bishop's the only defender of that pawn, uh, then uh, you, can, you can go ahead and capture it because the bishop's actually pinned. Here, the bishop is pinned if the queen's on e7, but the pawn can just take, and I have had that before. All right, so just rapid development, throwing the pieces out into the board. h3, what's going on here? I think my opponent's frozen in the headlights here. And now the sneaky queen e7. Signature move. Okay, queen blocks. And now, again, I can't take this because simply pawn takes. And we might end up with a trade of queens, which I, I probably don't want to do. 
So, knight c6, develop, get ready to castle. I've now got options either side. This is move seven, right? Move seven, I am about to complete development on move eight, which is the quickest you can possibly do it. My opponent is still an awful long way away. Yeah, he's a pawn up, but is it worth the cost of being five points down in development? I don't think so. So he plays bishop b2. I castle long. Nice and aggressive. And I do like castling long any time you haven't got a d-pawn. Try and get your king castling queenside. Because then you get your rook straight into the middle of the middle of the park. All good. He de finally develops a knight. I come in threatening again c2. We've seen it before. Queen comes back to defend. But now we do have a problem. Because now this bishop... Um, can move with discovered check. And the bishop now simply moves to the c4 and my opponent resigns in this position. Why? Well, what has he got? He can't block with the queen because bishop takes queen. If he blocks with the bishop here, I've got takes, 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 king takes, you know, centralize the rook, um, or even takes, takes, check, right? Even better. Four king, king and rook. King's gonna have to move. Okay, so let's say, let's say king goes here. I grab the queen, he recaptures, so now he can't castle. I get myself a rook. I'm plus five and the whole rook up. And again, he's got an isolated pawn, just horrible position. So he resigns there. Couple more different variations to different flavors of, of all of this, but they're all scandy. And now we walk into... Now, if you're going to play the Scandinavian, you have to know what to do about this. This is the Tennyson Gambit. And there is a, a famous trick in this called the ICBM, the Intercontinental Ballistic Missile. My opponent here does not play that, right? So this is one way to respond to the Scandinavian as white, but I don't really recommend it. So they are offering the pawn, okay? And then the knight would normally, in the tennis and go to here. But this works out not terribly well for my opponent because he plays his knight to d4. e5. Very often, if you accept a gambit and you've got a pawn off its own file, just back it up. Just, just throw your other central pawn up there, okay? Forget about this one. He's a goner. Don't worry about it. Knight now retreats, so I've just got that with tempo. I now bring out my knight to f6, might, might as well have a go at defending this pawn. He brings out his knight, I bring out my knight, bishop comes out. Knight now comes in, because if he takes me, I recapture, restore my pawn structure, and it comes with another tempo. So I really have wrestled the position of having the white pieces here. And that's what happens, he takes, takes, and now again, more tempo. Knight has to retreat. This isn't great. Bishop c5 defends the pawn a second time. And now, this is looking... Look at these strong pawns. I've got a centralized pair of pawns in my opponent's half of the board. He's only got a d-pawn. He's got no e-pawn, right? And I'm actually a pawn up at this point. So now he pushes b3, which is a bit limp. I castle. Uh, he fianchettos his dark square bishop, and I just push forward. Right? This is what you want to do. Your opponent's king is stuck in the middle of the board. Your king is castled and safe. You've got a rook ready to step in. You've got more development. Absolutely just bust open the center. So D takes. D takes. Do we want to trade queens? Not really. Right? But even so, F, F takes E3? So now where's his king? His king can only go long, right? But also, this pawn hangs. So I grab the pawn, he retreats a bishop. Now he can't legally castle that way anyway. He retreats a bishop, putting it between the, the queens. In flies the knight. So this is all front foot stuff, this is great, right? Knight comes out preventing the queen from coming here, because that, that was the danger, right? Queen comes out here with check, um, but also then knight coming in here, forking queen and rook. Um, not good. 
But his, so his knight comes to there. I mean, it's not like this check was really, really dangerous because he had uh, g3 anyway. Now, centralize the rook, preparing a discovered check. If you like your tactics, this is, this is for you. Again, he moves his knight another time. Again, his, his king, this is move 15. King is still stuck in the middle of the board. Um, I throw in a check, throw in another check, driving his king now out into the middle of the board. And that, my friends, is a checkmate. That is a beauty. Move 17. Good night. Thank you for playing. And that is the end of that. Right, last one. Last one. This is a 10 minute rapid. My opponent's 15-11 on 15-17, so very, very close. And it's a 10 mover. Boom, boom. Takes. Modern. Knight comes out. This is very common. This is very common. I'll quite often just take here. Take the pawn. Bishop comes out now, hitting my knight. I don't have to worry about this. The knight's defended. It's okay. And, and generally, you know, you don't want to go over defending stuff in the opening if you don't need to. Because if, if white takes and I take, then we've both got a piece out on the board. Right now, white's actually got two pieces out on the board to my one. So it's not in white's interest to give up his bishop right now. Okay, I pin the knight. He castles. I develop my knight. Slide the bishop back. Gets kicked. Um, he plays d4, which I think is decent. I push e6. Queen comes out. All right. Now, bishop takes f3. And there's a slight issue here because look at this queen here. Okay. This queen is defending this knight. It's not the only defender of the knight because the g-pawn is also defending the knight. But you hate, you don't want to move your g-pawn and expose your king, right? But the queen is also the only defender of d4. And both of these pieces are actually under attack. So I take, queen takes, oh dear, you've, you've now lost a pawn, right? And you've got your queen in the middle of the board, and we've got an evil pair of knights right next to each other, controlling a whole heap of squares. The two knights together. Right when they're when they're side by side, control so many squares. It's not even funny. Right? It's something like this, isn't it? Something like that is is all the squares they control. Absolutely hideous. So takes and loses his queen and resigns. There you go. So that is uh, what was who was that for? Roger, I think. Um, that's a, that's a flavour of the Scandinavian defence. I'm kind of liking it. I have to say, and like we say, if, if I go back to the opening explorer, I've had decent results. So, and I, I think from looking at these games, I mean, a lot of the games do do go on a lot longer. So here's a, if I filter it, we've got 79, 79, you know, quite a few games in the 50s, 60s and stuff. So you, you get to play a, a lot of chess and it, there's, there's a load of blitz games. Um, but again, you know, um, it's fun, it's aggressive, it's open, it, it's tactical. And it's also not the most common thing that, that you'll face. That most white players, um, it's the fourth most common reply to e4 at the beginning level. So you've got the king's pawn opening, you've got the Sicilian, you've got the French, and then you've got the Scandinavian with 10 million here compared to 50 million e5s. So your typical e4 player is not going to, the beginner and improvement, improving level, not going to be that familiar. It won't have played that many Scandinavians. Let's just check it on, on what have I seen. So if I go to my games as white on chess.com, right? So when I've played as white, let's flip the board around, e4, e5 3,200 times. c5, oops, no. The Sicilian defense, 1,100 times. E6, the French, 561. Okay, And then, finally, D5, the Scandinavian, 472 times. All right, so I've played E4 6,300 times, and I've seen the Scandi, 472. So that's like 6% or something like that of all the games that I've seen. That isn't a lot, is it? Not a lot at all. So, if you put a bit of a, and this is what I like about about 
this is the kind of opening that I look for. I'm looking for an opening that is going to throw my opponent off what they were expecting, right? So if, if White's a Vienna player, or an Italian player, or a Scotch player, or a Re Lopez player, right? No, it, all that's out the window, right? Because now they're a Scandinavian player. Now they're in Scandinavia. Welcome to Scandinavia, right? And now they're in your territory, and that—that's kind of what I what I like. Um, and and it's not it's not super risky. It's not um, it's not a daft opening at all. It's not really a gambit. It's kind of gambity. Um, but yeah, that's basically my my whistle stop tour. So if you like the sound, if you like the look of what you've seen, then give it a whirl. Um, if you want me to do more videos on the Scandi as black, then I'm happy to do that as well. So just let me know in the comments. Right, everyone, thanks for watching and I'll see you later.